Hello and welcome to the future of gaming. This Intel Farm is proudly brought by Digital Marketing ROI. Gaming stands for Gaming, Amusement, Media, Entertainment. Today I'm very proud to have uh, the following uh, distinguished panelists being um, Quake and um, Anthony. Quack is the um, head of gaming segment for, um, in the market development area, and Anthony is a gaming segment platform solution architect. Welcome, gentlemen. Thanks, Daniel. Hi, Dan. Uh, this is Quack, and nice to be here. Nice to be here. Anthony? Um, hi, I'm Anthony. I'm excited to be here to share about the gaming. Great, that's fantastic. So, I'm actually going to. Um, talk very briefly in the coming slides about the future of gaming and I want this forum really to be an opportunity for gaming developers and professionals out there to provide for uh, an exchange of ideas and uh, project collaboration. As director of the digital intelligent practice at Digital Marketing RI, I have a keen passion for and an active interest in using the best hardware to combine some of the innovative technological developments that we ourselves are working on. So thank you, gentlemen, for this opportunity. Yes, We're going to explore really the current and future applications of embedded technologies in the context of gaming. The interactive discussions we have is to really catalyze the thought process chain reaction. I know it's a very long word, but it's really to, to help developers you know, with ideas as to how they can drive more return on an Intel technology, or ROI, as we call it ourselves, return on investment. Because at the end of the day, gaming is fun, gaming is exciting, and gaming is becoming even more, um, you know, uh, spread out as, as it used to be before with the proliferation of, of, of gaming platforms and so on and so forth. Intel today um, is really the architecture of choice for a lot of, um, you know, other sectors. Today, we're going to look at where is it heading when we talk about beyond PC technologies. Go ahead, gentlemen. Um, quick, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, definitely. Gaming has been aware of quite an interesting market segment that is just looking for where they're focusing on. It brings us the joy, family, uh, and the money together, and the joy of the brand, etc. And lots to be known that India is being in the PC gaming space. And today, for the next one, uh, next hour together here with uh, Daniel and my partner here, uh, Anthony, we are going to discuss more about something beyond the PC. So something in the technology environment, something on the amusement part environment, arcade games for the family, uh, amusement entertainment unit of it. That's very good. That's excellent. So when we look at um, itself and its well-known um, presence in the PC uh, and desktop computing market and the, you know, the server market, a lot of people are now looking at beyond this into the embedded intelligence. And what we mean by that, gentlemen, is machines really endowed with intelligence. When it comes to that, again, why is Intel the architecture of choice from your perspective? Go ahead. Quick. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So this is definitely the, uh, something that the Intel intelligence uh, to, uh, so why not Intel? Uh, because uh, simply the Intel technology resolve uh, challenges in many industry and in hand together with the ecosystem partner in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. For instance, uh, we actually get a lot of uh, involvement with the ecosystem in, from the transportation, industrial, um, medical, health, health, healthcare, wellness, communication, etc. So um, we are proud to be in the ecosystem and talk, uh, resolve the challenges as in many industry by assisting in the deliver the performance on uh, all we can uh, to allow the ecosystem to uh, innovate around their proprietary algorithm run on the their, their, their algorithm on the grid and, mm -hmm. and, 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 and let us perform. Right, that sounds great. Anthony, what are your thoughts? Um, Intel's having it embedded for more than 30 years. So gaming's 
we have (uh) we are the one of the being the leader that deliver the gaming content using the higher information low powers powerful C_P_U great features of the graphics and media there's the advantage of Intel to able to excel in the gaming information right and definitely the long life cycle right yeah yeah because we are not talking about a you know, consumer category of yeah. course That's of course right. yeah I don't want to change my hardware yeah in every three to five years yeah you know we want to sell we want to have develop one solution and able to sell it for right for a long long time. And, and here you're bringing up uh, really a discussion point around OPEX, isn't it? Where you have the opportunity really to uh, get a longer return on investment over a protracted period of time at a lower OPEX. And OPEX stands for everyone there, the operating expenditure. So this is interesting and I think we're touching on a variety of subjects. Let's dig deeper into this. The world of um, mainstream games today are right in front of us, guys. I'm, not, I'm sure many of you are playing either Sims 3 or, uh, you know, some of the more advanced, um, you know, shoot 'em up games. When I look at those games, obviously as a, as a gamer enthusiast myself, I think this is fantastic. And I'm sure many of us here uh, played some of those games at least once, if not several times in their lives. But what I realized from playing those games is that without amazing hardware, you cannot really have an amazing gaming experience. And there's a lot of really computation requirements, isn't it, when it comes to those millisecond gaming permutations. Try to shoot multiple targets, try to, um, you know, play with various options and game characters. All of this require a lot of computation. How does Intel facilitate that amazing gaming experience today? Quake. Yeah, definitely. Carry on the multitasking of the multitasking environment. Increased performance is definitely uh, continue to be one of the Intel advancement uh, uh, leading areas. But performance plus low power uh, platform is another advancement that Intel is advancing with the latest uh, Intel uh, third generation core uh, processor. Right. Together with the Intel graphic, you know, the HD 4000. Uh, that is something that we proud of. You're going to dig deeper into this later on, right? The HD Yeah, graphics. definitely. Yeah. Okay. That's good. That's good to hear. And I think when I look at the uh, bottom uh, caption there, the great mainstream gaming experiences, you know, on the second generation core processors, later on we're going to talk about the next generation, which is generation three. And this is what I think is exciting, because already today when I look at the um, StarCraft game, you know, and I see the 3D reality that comes out of it and the gaming experiences are coming off of that, I can only but, you know, dream about the possibilities when the third core gaming architecture will allow, should the developer really start a conversation with Intel. But at the end of the day, it's really by talking about possibilities that we're going to innovate and create the future of tomorrow. So I think um, Intel is well known, as we said, but beyond gaming, uh, is an area that um, personally I wasn't aware that some of the virtual reality rides that I, that I enjoy a lot at either you know Disneyland or, or Dream World or any of those Warner Brothers World or something like that is really being made possible through the innovative um, application of uh, in this case Intel technology again right and what about casino gaming uh, there's a lot of um, different uh, uh, you know uh, scenarios that gamers want to be able to experience and yet one more time we can see here how Intel is really uh, playing its role in this ecosystem so quite go ahead can you help me uh, yeah. understand more mm -hmm. this is uh, definitely two different markets that require a uh, different degree or level of uh, uh, technical and technology requirements on the other hand about the casino uh, you can work more on the business uh, get a balance on the business environment uh, reliability security Etc. Et mm -hmm. And everything you need that uh, people will emphasize on the reliability. Okay. On the other hand, on the right hand side is on the more like uh, amusement part. You bring the system to the family's uh, enjoyment. Uh, people will emphasize on the, uh, the experience, the greatest experience, the sound system, the multimedia environment experience, etc. Right. So uh, the Intel-based uh, solution is definitely play a very important role here. It provides a kind of a, a scalability 
and very unique uh, Intel technology embedded into uh, 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 different uh, processors uh, category. Right. You know the Intel processor come into different uh, uniqueness uh, to fit on the different purpose, yet to somehow provide some uh, scalability and reliability. Right. And the long term uh, product offering. Right. So here it's really about co computing power. I mean, here I look on yes. the left hand side, this uh, very attractive casino employee here is playing with a roulette, but here it's an I roulette. And here I can imagine that within a casino context, you have really a lot of games and a lot of players, and all of that requires a lot of computing. So imagine that beyond just having one central server, there's many kind of interface points, and all that needs to be completely integrated within one solution stack, which I imagine later yeah. on we're going to touch on whereby uh, the Intel servers then interface with these different um, gaming terminals, if you will, and providing intelligence back and forth. All that needs to be managed and managed well. So uh, at the end of the day, when um, you have uh, gaming developers either within the supply chain logistics of, of creating gaming machines and trying to then work with casinos, it's important to understand how their machine can now fit within the casinos technology, architecture, and make sure that everything works together. Right, guys? Yeah, you bet. Yeah, Daniel, you get it all right. Okay, that's good. Um, the future is here. In cases, for me, um, I see gaming really about pushing the limits of what's possible when it comes to innovative hardware, next generation, Intel core computing. And in this picture, which is very uh, inspiring in many ways, um, it's really in inspiring me to, to stretch my imagination when it comes to uh, what's possible. The question I've got, and here I'd like both of you guys to maybe jump in here and explain to me some more, is technology finally catching up with science fiction? Okay. So, this is actually a very interesting to discuss into the future of the gaming uh, in this uh, area. So I believe uh, from from the developer on this uh, segment, definitely there are all uh, knowledge, the graphic performance, multimedia environment experience, like high definition video, 3D, etc. These are the expected items. So uh, Intel continues to advance into this, this, and this is like a default and we kind of develop our system uh, along the line. Okay. So on the other hand, on the more human machine interaction. Yeah, the more the human machine interaction will require on on the performance and for the responsive experience as a drop. And then the the, the other the other element that people are uh, highlighting into a very consideration will be along the in connected environment. Nowadays the system are getting connected. Talking about the security, talking about the manageability. It simply is that it is no longer a standalone system in the in, in the in the in the environment, regardless on whether you are from the gaming experience or you are from uh, uh, other uh, 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 business environment. Right, right. Yeah. No, I, I get and, your point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the last portion, then, but last but not the least, it will be a, a really the great promise of the scalability, but definitely in the business environment consideration. Yeah. Uh, something that you invest for the future. Yeah, from now. Right. Okay. How about you, Anthony? Any any thoughts on that? Oh, I just um, quite covered most of that. <laughs> right. No worries. So, <laughs> guys, a genius. Okay. Yeah. All right. So to me, I, I think really it's not about what's possible today. It's what's about possible tomorrow. That's to me, it's it's the most exciting aspect of where um, hardware computing is going to enable more of the virtual reality and the alternate reality and the augmented reality capabilities. And got hardware developers out there, it's really up to you guys, because it's not up to, 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 to Intel or even myself. We can provide an environment where we can have intelligent conversations. So I encourage everyone out there who has a question to ask, please ask. And uh, one of our um, uh, team members, Roger, will be able to pass the questions on to me. And if we think it's appropriate, happy to answer it. The panel is here. And I want to converse with you. We really want to know what's going on in terms of your R&D roadmap, in terms of what are you thinking would be great, and what are the questions that you have when it comes to more human-machine interaction opportunities. Because this, to me, 
where the future of gaming is going to really take advantage of the current and the future Intel core processors as uh, together we, we, we generate these um, opportunities for, uh, for next generation gaming. Okay guys, so the next, the next slide really uh, is one where we can uh, now look at beyond what's obvious when it comes to gaming. And there's really more than just graphics, right? Gaming experience yeah. Yeah, um, is really more about just that. So as we can see here, um, many game, gaming developers um, are, are very much focused on graphics and I think that's very important and yet it's about the overall user experience. It's about looking at the whole supply chain logistics, the uh, economic value chain, if you will. Because at the end of the day, uh, a casino or, 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 or a game, you know, a theme park, if you will, will be buying some of those games, right? It includes hardware and, and then the software developers as well. So some of the issues that we can see right in front of me here, like TCO and uh, security and manageability. Anthony, tell us more about what you think when it comes to that. Yeah, so every time when we talk about games, people will first think you need a great GPU and you need a fast CPU. Uh, but as an embedded gaming team, we know that uh, embedded gaming is not just look at these two aspects. We look from the total cost of ownership and we look from the power, the tools, security and management. And the, the things that how we look from the total cost of ownership, we try to, Intel try, always try to work to give a user better options to deliver solution with a lower cost of ownership. How to achieve that power, mm -hmm. security. So if the total cost, we try to look it from the cost of how you develop and how you're going to maintain it. Intel give us a, but a, a low power solution that able to reduce your cost on your powers on the long life, uh, long uh, the long time frame. Right. From there, you can save up a lot of powers and money to deliver another solution. Exactly. Example: long term operation and building, right? Yeah. That's true, guys. So uh, at the end of the day, uh, the um, scalability of uh, the solution needs to take into account the uh, economic cost of the ownership. And this is what you guys are talking about, is making sure that hardware doesn't yes. just last for the next uh, you know, uh, trend, the next fad, but actually has um, a longer ROI that uh, really focus on yeah. the yeah, the return, right, over time. Yes, money is very important. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah at the end of the day, you know, the whole, the whole world's gonna revolve around that. So, um, definitely. So in the next coming slide, uh, we're going to explore, I guess, uh, being really uh, interested in discussing with you gentlemen is about the future of the latest third generation core processor. So again, to me, uh, we all know uh, from going to the um, department stores and, and, and so on and so forth, looking at different PCs, that the i7 core is very, very powerful. And yet, uh, there's more to it, there's turbo boost. How does it actually work? What are we going to do when it comes to um, unleashing its true power? Are the things that I, I think uh, are worth exploring? Um, many years ago, and I constantly read books, you know, uh, written uh, by the um, early proponents of artificial intelligence like Roger Penrose and uh, Moore himself, uh, one of the founders of Intel, you know, uh, stated that uh, CPU power doubles every three, year, uh, three years or so. I think. So with the third generation processors, the possibilities are even more fantastic than ever. I would like you guys to really elaborate and really kind of um, map it out for the developers who are listening out there th as to what are the perhaps niche or even mainstream applications in a, sort of the areas that require uh, you know, the kind of power that an Intel 7 i7 core can provide. So, um, yes. Quake, I'd like to start with you, but, uh, but Anthony, yes. if you've got any ideas uh, that you'd love to share, go ahead. Okay, uh, this is Quake. Yeah, it's really true. Yeah, this is actually everything starts here with the third generation and your core processor to power the future of your uh, latest uh, gaming system. And we are very excited about this uh, third generation processor. There are a lot of that kind of uh, unique uh, 
Intel technology is kind of embedded into uh, uh, different skill of the core, uh, uh, the core, core processor. So to, to, to get a more experience uh, uh, or element, for the element or term or which is really handle, handle about multi, you talk about multitasking, you talk about the uncompromised in the CPU performance, you talk about security, remote management, security, every, everything uh, you, you will find somewhere, somewhere here in this uh, uh, third generation process. And in, if you ask me to kind of provide or summarize now, uh, I would say the, perform, the performance, uncompromised performance, and mm -hmm. continue to put the third generation processor into the market front of the marketplace and together with the low power environment the performance and the low power uh, these two elements can be always uh, tied together yeah right no longer a separate item that if you deliver the performance with the low power okay and and it's additional a better figure on the integrated graphics uh, you found a lot of uh, information about the Intel integrated uh, HD 4000 that is already put us uh, in front of the graphic, uh, graphic uh, uh, market share uh, on the integrated graphic portion. So, Quack, yeah. tell me a little bit more about the, the HD4000. Can you kind of go a little bit more deeply into, into uh, how, does that, how does that help uh, gaming developers? You know, just oh, maybe a few, a few thoughts. Yeah. I think this, this is uh, always uh, something uh, that we are uh, proud of and we will continue to highlight from the case by case. And uh, HP 4000 actually put us in front of the, uh, the leading edge on the graphic performance uh, with the third generation processor. And we continue to advance this and we are on, on the uh, coming up uh, fourth generation uh, core processor into the uh, uh, next year 2013. And before we get into more detail the, the, about this, uh, uh, Anthony, you have a few words to add on? Yeah, um, HP 4000 is a, a name for the graphic family, what that link it to as a technical thing is that when it comes to HG4000, we have 16 execution unit engine in the graphics uh, processor. That means you have a 16 core in the graphic chip that able to process all your graphic requests and the media stuff. Okay. And when it comes to the next generation, it will double up to become 40 execution unit. Did so you say four, 40? 40, right? Yes, 40, 40, yes. It's amazing. Go ahead. Yes, it's amazing that when we, uh, we always try to have using the uh, equal or even lower power, then we still can fit in more execution units inside the graphics. Now, um, yeah, that's explain, what to no, that's great. So explain to me a little bit more here. When you talk about uh, execution units, in my mind, I'm thinking parallel processing, multi-threading, hyper-threading. I mean, there's another way to explain it, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we can yeah. handle more computational inputs, maybe uh, take into effect uh, three-dimensional computing when it comes to uh, gaming in a 3D environment, or even uh, take into account multiplayer scenarios. So all that, unless you've got that in, in place, really cannot be executed. Is that what you're saying? Uh, yeah. So. Uh for the EU inside the graphics, it will be handle the graphics operations, stuff like the, the rendering of the trees scenario. Uh, when you have a more EU inside, that means you can render the screen faster and better. Ah. So you can have a more real 3D. Right. Yeah. EU means execution unit. Yes, yes. Thank you. No, that's great. It's, it's very inspiring uh, uh, because uh, from what I what experience and feedback from the uh, customer or the ecosystem, we found one of the challenge with the additional uh, graphic add-on driver is always the uh, additional cost, mean additional cost, and the power, right? We consume more power and additional cost on the, to eliminate right. the thermal solution to, to get back the power from the additional That's right. Part. Now, everything you can actually realize with the third generation is your core processor. Right. So this would have multiple implications from an environmental perspective because a lot of power generates a lot of heat. And what you guys are saying to me there that um, you can get the power without the, um, without the uh, consumption of power, if you will, you know, as in electricity from the wall. And obviously I'll generate a lot less heat because it, it's very efficient. So this is very exciting. Um, it's exciting because I can only imagine as a hardware developer, if I was one, that I would want to really um, 
use um, this to, to create gaming experiences perhaps that uh, haven't quite yet gone mainstream. And by that, we could be thinking about the uh, scenarios that we had explored previously or touched on, if you will, when it comes to virtual reality gaming, which can only uh, be made possible if you've got the power. And from my kind of uh, personal opinion, as a uh, technology consumption, very much a first mover kind of person, you know, I'm always buying the, the latest quad core phones and, uh, you know, um, had voice assisted dictation when I uh, even more than 10 years ago. So I'm very much a technology buff. And looking at who are the players out there, I realize that um, I guess, you know, Intel appears to me to be the only one having that solution today. So um, moving forward from here, um, I can imagine that uh, a lot of the multiplayer scenarios and a lot of the um, online games, if you will, require payment. And with that comes the issue of security, you know? People are using the credit cards to buy games. They want to participate in multiplayer uh, kind of gaming across geographies. And it's important to make sure that uh, security is not just at the software level, because I'm sure there's a lot of companies that do a very good job at protecting users at the software level. What we are talking about here is not protection at the software level, right? Go ahead, guys. Help me understand yeah, sure. how does that work, quick. Yeah, sure, definitely. So one of the trends, uh, as we discussed, uh, for the today and future gaming environment, will be always uh, get connected, uh, getting connected into the environment, into the environment. So when things get connected, the security always come into uh, one of the key concern of it. And from your perspective, we uh, kind of uh, acknowledge and kind of uh, get in prepared already since uh, many, many years back. Um, today, the MSP. And Intel company, they're very really helping Intel to deal with the backup and the security uh, at the system level. So to highlight here that uh, more to on to uh, more to related related to the uh, uh, discussion topic today, context today will be the embedded security control portion of it. Uh, you can have uh, application control, the tension control. Yeah. Can, like can I ask you a question? Quick, quick. Yeah. Sorry. Um, I think for me, uh, when I when I first came across protection uh, that is uh, even pre-software, uh, I got to clearly understand and map it out in my head that, you know, the security really kicks in before any third-party software, before even the OS kind of, uh, you know, kicks in, right? So this is software, yes. at, right, this is software at the machine level language. Can you, what would be an example of that? Give me some examples where it actually interfaces with the machine level software. <laughs> I can see you guys are both excited because you, you both want to jump in. So That's have a good a, question. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. So um, we call it pre, pre OS load security yeah. Yeah. and we have a lot of we call platform technologies that's able to cover this. Uh, if, you, if you learn from marketing, we have something called TXP, mm -hmm. TPM. Uh, AES, NI, those are the some, some terms that I will try to uh, talk about in details later on in a, a few slides later uh, about the platform's security technology. There's something to protect the, the, the whole platform even before the, the OS or any bootloader. Okay, go ahead. No, that's interesting. And talk to us a little bit more. Um, Anthony, uh, what, what's TXT again? Because I want to make sure the audience is crystal clear. Oh, it's called Trusted Execution uh, Technology. Yeah, oh, right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought so. Technology yeah. called it TXT, yeah. So what's exciting here is that uh, a lot of, uh, you know, malware and, and uh, you know, ill-intended hackers can easily break through at the third-party software level through a Trojan could even start to infect the OS. But before it can actually do damage, when the machine boots up, the way I understand it, the McAfee Intel solution kicks in already. So therefore, it can really protect the user in ways that I guess any other technology stack can today, right? And that would be a fairly unique from my personal understanding of the technology, that it's really the only 
complete technology stack that can really keep malware and hackers away. And I, can, I, I know, and all of us know from reading the news, that's been some very famous examples where uh, databases have been compromised because the software wasn't, I, I mean, the logins and, and the database that was securing logins wasn't properly encrypted and so on and so forth. And yet, I think that itself could actually spawn a new chapter in, in terms of the discussion that we could have in the future. But um, for now, let's, let's move on to the next thing. And here, you know, here comes optimization, one of my favorite ideals. That really uh, stands at the core of our own, um, you know, uh, thought process. And beyond being really simply powerful in terms of hardware, gaming developers really need to think about the entire gaming platform, the ecosystem itself, and, and really take in consideration what is it that's going to impact the game platform's life cycle? And what we mean by life cycle um, implies a lot of things, right? It could be things like uh, the scalability. It could take into account the OPEX, meaning how long is this piece of hardware going to last? And in fact, it could lead us on to really looking at the CAPEX as well. So Anthony, what are your thoughts when it comes to um, you know, maybe some feedback when you talk to customers, gaming developers out there. What are they telling you? Um, yeah, so in so want to, to share to you that Intel, not just uh, the silicon company, so we have the software solution together. One, one of these page that we want to strength is that uh, try to share to, to the user out there. Optimization effort is very important for the game solution, and we have the tools, and we have some get great tools that that can help the developers to optimize on the, a lot of the OS platforms based on the IA graphic technology. That um, then we will talk about that what tools that you can use and what the features that you can achieve using the tools. Okay. Features, I get it. So um, optimization um, and, and the future proofing and the scalability, I guess, are, are some of the things that if I was a game developer and I'd bring one of the Intel experts, um, what, in, in what way could you guys you know, help me, I guess, if I haven't yet okay. built the roadmap? Mm -hmm. Maybe one of you guys can jump in there. OK, I can just, just give a quick thing. Okay. We have a tools called. GPA, Graphic Performance uh, Analyzer. You just run the tools, then you will know that where's your bot the, the application bottleneck is. Whether it's due to that you, the G CPU is, is waiting for a GPU to respond, or, or your GPU is busy, but your screen is, is too easy, doing nothing right there. From there, you know that what actually happens in the really bottoms from the silicon wise. There's some tools there for us to help to optimize, to help you to design and develop your application in more efficient on IA platform. I see what you mean. And on the other hand, uh, if you kind of uh, 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 heavily depend on the platform, uh, optimize your software and the hardware together, then you want you always want your your, your platform to be a uh, long life of carry forward. Something like a future proof to be courage. Simply uh, as, as, as simple as right, uh, how do you, how how long how far can you carry your investment carry carry your, your invested uh, solution carry on right? So we talk about uh, the long life cycle on the product offering, hardware for offering, and to support the customers and uh, long uh, product longevity. Okay. Right. Then that's great. Now I think um, I think it's important for us now to. Um, to look at, uh, okay, we've got a very keen participant, Devendra, right, sharing his um, his video. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> right. Very good. Um, okay. So uh, perhaps if, if you don't mind, uh, participants, because I know you, you're very keen to share with you with us, um, you know, how, how you feel about technology. Um, but for the purpose of the record, because we're recording this slide, could you please... Um, you know, um, minimize uh, the window. Just bear with me, guys. Okay. 
All right. So um, the next the next slide really will will help us um, understand a little bit better the various, I guess, platforms um, and and the various uh, chipsets I, I guess that are best suited for uh, each of the gaming platforms out there. So um, let's review each CPU and and see how it's currently being used and uh, how with more power uh, possibilities multiply. So how does powerful a CPU really need to be? Uh, I personally, uh, you know, started using i7s. I think about a year or so ago when it first launched, and uh, I could see a massive difference. In fact, if our own company will run various iterations of i5, and then, then i7 is really the kicker for us, and we can see a massive difference. Even running four megabyte RAMs on our PCs and having i7s in, the, in the, as a chipset makes a huge difference. Quick. Please help us understand um, more about specifically, you know, the class-leading i7, um, you know, class of processors. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, each processor will come, uh, in the coming, uh, uh, yeah, all, all the same, because uh, each of them are actually uh, customized into different architecture to fit on their different uh, purpose. And for the core i7, uh, so core 5, core 3, they actually go into, into one uh, family. And uh, we mentioned about the uh, third generation core i3, uh, core processor just now. They actually cover i3, i5, i7. And from this category, we actually have uh, two, uh, two different uh, uh, family. Uh, we, we go in by two different family. Uh, one, I emphasize on the uh, mobile portion of it, right? we emphasize on the low power. Typically, this family will range from the like, 17, 17 watt to 45 watt. And on the second, and the, on the other hand, we also have like a kind of uh, scalable, uh, more high, more emphasized on the performance. They typically run from the 65 watt uh, and above. So, all after all, the overall idea about this one is just to deliver a solution that you can have a good mix of performance and low power. Uh, integrated HD 4000, the high high definition graphic processor, and tailored with some of the Intel technologies uh, wrapped around. So when I mentioned about the Intel technology here, it could be some of the that we already mentioned just now, the TSP, and some we are going to discuss later on, like the Intel uh, uh, built-in uh, feature uh, family, etc. So we will discuss more about the Intel built-in feature uh, technology on the all right, very good. So what uh, actually, um, you know, kind of grabs my attention here is really the server-based gaming with the adoption of, uh, you know, widespread adoption of cloud and cloud-based services and cloud-based application and computing in the cloud. Um, the demand, uh, from, from my anecdotal reading, personal interest in technology, I realize some of the biggest uh, OEMs out there are really shifting their business models to really cater to the server market, and obviously many of those, um, you know, OEMs have Intel Xeon chips running those servers, right? So these server-grade chips are really what's uh, enabling us today to um, enjoy in multiplayer gaming, kind of uh, higher computational uh, scenarios, provided you have the right bandwidth, of course. And this is what's exciting to me. But that leads now uh, leads us now to to look at um, the next. Uh, of possibilities and here I'll just read them out quickly uh, you've got the video sync you've got in true 3d technology uh, the clear video HD technology uh, as you call it guys wide eye which is wireless display and this is exciting because um, we all know that uh, media is enjoyed sometimes on a handheld sometimes on a laptop but very much enjoyed in its full glory when you've got a huge screen, such as the one I'm looking right now. Um, and obviously, um, when it comes to um, these various solutions, um, there's a quantum leap that's currently transforming, um, you know, consumption of media with three-dimensional TV, for example, right? We all go into the department stores. Some require glasses. Some don't require glasses. There's a whole range of permutations that are available out there, transforming how consumer media. So, Anthony, why don't you tell us how uh, Intel is helping, um, 
you know, not just gaming, but, but multimedia consumption. Okay, yeah. From, um, from here, you can see that Intel invested lots of response to continue to improve the graphics and media technologies that embedded in the Intel graphics. I will pick some from here to just talk more in detail. Uh, one thing you can see right here, the intro 3D technology, there's some things new. And it's a technology where Intel worked together with DreamWorks to develop the, the stereoscopic 3D on the Intel platform. So the first movie that support this feature is the Monster vs. Aliens that released in 2009. I saw and the movie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Good. If, if you try that, you can actually get the three D version and you can watch it, the three D effect mm -hmm. using your laptop that support the intro three D technology. Mm. So this um, something that you, know, you want to share with you. Right, right. So talk to us a little bit more because I can imagine there's like uh, potentially hundreds of megabytes streaming per second at the same time from an encoding and decoding perspective, right? Especially if we've got a highly packed um, Blu-ray disc where the uh, yeah. realness is even more, uh, more lifelike than ever. So talk to us a little bit about that and what is Intel's uh, Quick Sync video doing there? Yeah, so Quick Sync video is about the transcoding and the Clear Video HD technology is about the decoding and encoding. So the quick scene video is the technology where to help us to convert the one format of your video to another format. Example, when you want to download from internet and view it on the screen, or you want to transfer it to your phone to another smaller format, that everything can be done in no time using the quick scene video. Oh. And clear video HD technology is uh, about using the hardware to do the video encoding and decoding and you will not use any PC resource to do that because spending everything done by itself using the media engine in the graphic. Right. So um, help me uh, clarify my own mind. Uh, it's, it sounds to me that I don't need to get um, to go into any conversion like using software to convert. Yes. Right. I see. This is a better version than the software. Of Lots course. Of uh, that's a nightmare. Mm -hmm. And um, you said to me two things. First of all, I don't rely on third-party software. That's a plus. Secondly, uh, it doesn't use actually more CPU than necessary. So that means I'm free to multitask and run, you know, simultaneous applications while this is going on. That's, that's very exciting. So um, here Intel is really be going beyond, from my perspective, beyond simple hardware, right? In providing a middle... Right, providing middleware, can I call it that, between user interface and the hardware itself? Okay, uh, we have the framework that supports the, the, all these features that I think, if you know something called India, Intel Media SDK that we will share about this okay. later, that some things that to tell us how to utilize the hardware right here to incorporate into your software. Wow. That's new to me. So guys, um, if I were you, I'd be jumping on the phone, send an email to those friendly Intel representatives, and basically uh, get, your S get your hands on the SDK. Because uh, as a hardware developer, um, one of the main concerns, and, and us ourselves at Digital Marketing RI, always innovating web-based technologies. And one of the biggest problems we've got is to make sure that it runs on all platforms, all OSs, all browsers. By getting your hands on a on, a, on an SDK from Intel. What do you call that again? What's the full name, Anthony? The Intel Media SDK. Intel Media SDK. Get your hands on one of those because that will probably shortcut your R&D and your quality assurance and your testing, measuring, and user experience, you know, um, tests by a huge factor. I'm pretty sure of it because I can see already how that could benefit some of the things that we are doing. Yeah, optimization all the way. That's very exciting. So there's a whole range. Is there any other, I mean, besides that SDK that, that you want to highlight just for, for a few seconds? Oh, right. Oh. Here there's uh, something called Switchable Graphics. That's a very interesting feature for embedded gaming. Uh, we all know that the current generation graphics support three display outputs for customers that wish to have more than three 
display of which they can use together with the external graphics. And Intel is something called switchable graphics that allow the integrated graphics to work together with the external graphics. Okay. So there are uh, different, um, you know, I guess, um, platforms that utilizes third-party graphics or maybe yeah. additional graphics, if you will, right? And this is where it becomes, again, useful to know that uh, Intel has that solution. And the question I would have as a gaming developer, how is all, thing, all, all of those going to work together, right? And it's only really by having yeah. conversation, such as the one we're having now, that A, we're going to discover what's possible, what's available, and B, how to actually take advantage of it. So guys, again, please get on the phone or, or, or when an Intel expert calls you up, uh, take advantage of this, uh, of this wealth of knowledge and uh, wealth of resources to get your ga gaming platform R&D up and running. The next slide, we're going to now look at screen across multiple monitors. Now, as somebody who goes a lot to conferences, in, in many cases as a presenter on, um, on web-based technologies, I see those screens out there, and I always wondered, how does this work? Because um, a big picture, you know, a picture tells a thousand words. We all know that. But a big picture says even bigger words, right? <laughs> yeah? And uh, yes. here I've got four screens, but showing one picture. That's very cool. So um, bigger is better. H how do you guys do this, by the way? Yeah, so you, you all know what is high, de high definition video, high definition resolution. Right. This is better than high def. This is 4K resolution. Okay. So if you know that the current Intel third generation core supports 4K resolution, so you can either operate to single panel that supports 4K resolution, which is very expensive, or you can use the technology that we have right here that you can split across four monitors, then you can have four K resolution and merge together. So it has a cheaper cost to ah. give you such an effect. Nice. So I'm just curious, what does four K stand for? That's a resolution means it means uh, oh, I think I, I let me see whether I remember now. It's uh, three eight four zero times two one six zero pixel. Wow. <laughs> That is, yeah, well, that, that's like uh, some people call that retina or something like that, right? That would be of the same kind of level of resolution. Very awesome. I need one of those in my living room. Can you guys please help me out, right? <laughs> and yeah, install please this. order through everyone. Oh, got it. No problem. Yeah, take care of it. Okay, so um, I guess, you know, um, we can now dig a little bit more deeply into the latest CPU and the latest platform technologies. There's so many out there and love to cover a little bit more, uh, especially when, it, when we talk about Turbo Boost. Turbo Boost to me is get the power, use the power if and when you need it. We've all seen them on PCs for sale, but um, you know, what, what actually goes on um, you know, in, in a gaming platform? You're playing the game, a lot of bad guys show up, you gotta shoot them up, the background is changing, right? In dynamic, mm -hmm. dynamically shifting around you. Okay, that's a lot of computing power. So Turbo Boost probably kicks in at some point. What what actually goes on? Um, okay, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can share about more details about Turbo Boost. Um, it Turbo Boost is an overclocking mechanism. So it means that using the same power where you want to have more needs on your CPU. Then the frequency they will the system will by itself raise the frequency of the CPU. But sometimes when you have a scene that where it requires a lot of rendering from the graphics engine, then they will lower the frequency from CPU and increase the frequency of the graphics. Ah. Then that's how we overflow each other and everything is done by itself. You have your the platform will handle everything, you don't need to control it through your hardware. Right, I see. Or, I mean, sorry, through your software application. Mm. So it's really about balancing the CPU's capabilities so that it's actually geared towards perhaps the graphics part. Yes, yeah, definitely. I see. Because Interesting. You, you, yeah, because you, you, you remember that time, uh, through our discussion, uh, the, the gaming requirement for the future and to uh, today. Uh, it's no longer only emphasizing the graphics, uh, it's also emphasizing the performance on the CPU and to get the responsiveness of it. So the CPU, if it's a turbo boost here, it's kind of give some intelligence uh, for uh, flexibility for the developer. Yeah, yeah. interesting. 
So beyond having multi-core platforms, uh, having Turbo Boost on top really gives you as much power as you could ever need. That's what makes sense to me here. Okay, very good guys. This slide really encapsulates how far Intel has gone from simply creating, you know, what is effectively some of the most powerful chipsets out there to providing analyzers and, and analytics, if you will, and optimization tools such as, um, you know, Parallel Studio, um, you know, you've got Analytics Pack, as we mentioned. All of this is um, very useful. I guess there's so much more that we could, we could spawn into a whole new discussion, um, you know, avenue, just looking at, say, performance analyzers. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Um, yeah, so you are right, there's a, more, a lot more, but these five four pairs right here are the most important for the gaming segment. Really? So we have the first one that something that you should not miss we call Graphics Performance Analyzer or the GPA. It's a free tool that you can download from the Intel website. It's a tool where it allows you to uh, analyze your application whether it's uh, the bottleneck is at the CPU or the GPU. That's right, you mentioned so we, that. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So we even can go, if you remember, I'm, I, I talked about Exposition Unit CEU. That's mm -hmm. a very tiny core inside the graphic. And using GPA, you even know that which GPU is working for that scenario. Right. For the application scene. So you will know that, hey, how come I only utilize three CEU? It didn't come to 16 CEU that's supported by Ivy Bridge. Uh, sorry, by the third generation core. Right. And that's a tool that can help you to understand how your software interacts with the hardware I see. in details. So it's more about core optimization and EU optimization at the more granular level. Right? So that way you can make a decision, right, as to whether you're going to use a, a basic and yet powerful Celeron, or do you have to go all the way to i3, i5, and i7 because of the EU that you require more EUs. Is that is that right? Uh, yeah, so so different skill will have a different EU number. So, but the, the, the tools will support on all skills right here. And another thing is that the, the tools have some simulations uh, option that allow you to turn on or turn off, turn off some features and see how your application responds. So you don't need to crack your head your head to and change the code. You just use the tools to, to turn off some features ah. and you will know how the system responds like a virtual simulation. And from there, uh, even before you buy your chips or whatever the case may be, you already know how they're gonna perform pretty much, you know, with minor variances, right? Yes. Ah, that's really good. Yeah, right. So I, I imagine from a R&D and uh, from a CAPEX perspective, this has gotta do wonders. Maybe we should get CFOs on this, uh, on this farm as well, because they're gonna be very happy. Right, because the guys are going to be spending hundreds of thousands of dollars buying hardware that at the end of the day may not actually do the trick. And yet, just by going to software.intel.com, as you can see on the slide here, you can get a free download, run any permutation that you may wish to run to see how effective that is. I bet you Iron Man uses one of those, right? Tony Stark, do you reckon he's got one of those uh, graphic performance analyzers? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding with you guys. I have, I have one on my laptop. You have one on your laptop, Tony Stark, you Definitely, know, my yeah. man? I'm sure he's got one of those. Guys, you know, this is really about gaming. So on this very light note, we're really going to wrap up in a few, um, in a few, in a few moments, really. But um, there's so much more, and the integrated performance um, part and the VTune amplifier, are, are they also equally downloadable on software.intel? Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, if you really want to have an in-depth conversation, I, I can only imagine how um, guys like Quek and Anthony or, or, or Roger or any of the guys there, and there's plenty of them, that are just um, you know, um, full of knowledge, practical ideas, that at the end of the day is going to mean R-O-I-T. And for you guys who remember from our, from our earlier slide, stands for Return on Intel Technology, Return on Investment. So um, it's really here uh, that it's all coming together in my mind, um, you know, as somebody who's, who's been um, 
very interesting technology and talking to you guys there at Intel for, uh, for a while now to see how, you know, it's not just the talk, it's really down to the deliverables. And you cannot go beyond what we see right in front of us as those very deliverables. So on this note, uh, I'd like to begin to wrap up because um, today we started a conversation about the future of gaming. We looked at the application intensive environments that are out there, especially when you're looking at um, multiple dimensional gaming. <clears throat> I mean, the three dimensions plus, you know, other variables that kick into it. Um, and Intel's unparalleled range of CPUs, its complete hardware and firmware technology stack, really provides a complete ecosystem from my perspective. And for the smart gaming developers out there who really want to maximize their development roadmap, you know, as well as proactively solve challenges at the inception stage, and from there accelerate their build, there is only one complete solution from what I can see. So there's security. We talked about that before with McAfee running virtually you know, below the OS level. There's speed, the various incarnations of the I cores, the, uh, the classes, even we've got server class I7, scalability enabled solutions, you know, uh, which which going to enable pretty much by the team we've just been talking to right now. All this is very exciting. So I really suggest that you guys start a conversation. If you're a hardware developer, gaming developer, why don't you have a conversation with them and get the best ROI T that you can get? Anthony and Quack, I'd like you to to maybe uh, uh, tell us a few words and and um, to kind of summarize where we're at. And um, go ahead. So the gaming experience of today is a uh, uh, gaming solution is no longer about uh, uh, graphics alone. Graphics is important, yes, but uh, there are more, many more factors that we as we discussed earlier. Uh, it's required to meet today's competitive edge. So as you, as you look from the end user perspective, people are looking into the great gaming experience. It comes from the great responsiveness of the system. And from the provider perspective, you will talk about, they will talk about the total cost of our skills and make sure the investment is work for the future, scalable, reliable, a platform that allow a, a longevity, etc. So with this uh, uh, latest and digital platform, the, the third generation core based uh, solution, we actually provide a performance with the low power, with a great integrated graphic solution with the Intel technology uh, that we mentioned earlier at the overall. So you really able to fit uh, the purpose uh, as the deliver the experience from the end user perspective and the provider point. Yeah. And then Anthony. Oh yeah, so I'm going to pick up on the room too. So um we try to look when you develop develop the, the gaming solutions for Intel platform, try to look at the features that we support using the Intel core technology. Yeah, and you were surprised that those that are really able to help you to create the next powerful and futuristic games that are able to deliver to your customers. And we are very happy to be able to share with you today <laughs> and we hope to receive your questions soon. Good. Hey, Thank Anthony you. Quack, uh, thanks again. Uh, it was a pleasure speaking with you guys and I, and I hope this will spawn many conversations with hardware developers out there. As you can see there, please email um, you know, any inquiries to, the, to this email address, you see OSCLMAPAC at intel.com. Um, increasingly, uh, uh, you know, additionally, I mean, if you want to review this webinar, it will be posted on the um, Intel uh, showroom site um, powered by Digital Marketing RI. So please check back and, um, and we'll like to see you again at our next webinar. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you.